The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN. <clears throat> and so we have some clarity after Election Day and quite a decisive win for Trump, man. He might win the general, the the populist, the general vote. Um, just a remarkable win. There's clarity there and markets are taking it to the upside. S&P is up an even 2%, up 116 points right now. NASDAQ 100 up by 1.6%. Some of the Magnificent 7 not trading dramatically higher. We have pockets here, winners and losers, of course. The Dow up 2.8%, pushing all-time highs this morning at 43.781. And how about the Russell up by almost 6%? And you got the Russell now climbing within a stone's throw of all-time highs from 2021. You talk about it, folks. Here we are three years later in the Russell, finally challenging those all-time highs. The other markets, all-time highs as well. There's your S&P trading at 59.54 this morning. And yeah, the Russell, though, how about it, man? Up by 5.7%. Folks, the Russell, a year ago, was trading at 1,600. We're up 50%. You hear that? We are up 50% from where we were last November in the Russell 2402. Bitcoin, not surprising there. All-time highs. We'll put it back to a daily to see the move this morning. Up to 76,170. We've pulled back a bit. Now, what is interesting is, what do they always say? Buy the, buy the rumor, sell the news, right? We'll see if this can hold. Bitcoin's been on quite a run since September from 55,000 up to 75,000. We're bumping up against the highs of March, and we pull back right at that critical level. That high from March was 74,415, and we're trading basically to the tick at that price level in Bitcoin. Crude trading lower this morning, $70 and 10 pennies right now. And boy, the story of the morning is notes and bonds, which tie into the dollar which ties into gold and commodities, okay? Let's kick it off with the 10-year first. You talk about a mammoth move. Now, when I put this on the charts this morning, we're at 4.46. Let's see where we're trading at right now. 4.46 is where we are. 4.46, you talk about a move, man. 109.11, we're down by more than a full tick. But how about the 30-year? How about the 30-year, folks? The biggest move we've had... Um, in some of these, whether you're talking about the euro we're going to pull up, okay, but the 30-year, the down almost three full points right now. Three full points. 115, 18, and we got the 30-year down by two points and 10 ticks, and we jump over to the dollar. The market is saying higher yields coming at you, and you got the dollar up almost two full points to 105.23. Now, normally, right, higher yields would scare equity markets a bit. But not when we're talking about larger things in play here, okay? The market's saying, you know what? We're going to be okay for right now. Now, the first move's not always the move that carries. And these are some dramatically higher yields that are playing in. And there's a number of things that are going to factor into this, right? Now, what are you looking for? Are you looking for deregulation? Are you looking for tax cuts on the corporate level? Tariffs are in play, which could be inflationary. The tax cuts could cost seven trillion dollars over the next 10 years okay so what are we dealing with potentially we're dealing with tariffs which could be inflationary we're dealing with a debt that could expand and we're dealing with deregulation which will cause greater numbers of growth all of that points to higher yields in the future it's not coming down equity markets just yet though normally that would be a hindrance for equity markets not coming in right now man and probably not coming in today but as you persist on this market, pay attention to those because, yeah, we're talking about big numbers here. And what are we talking about? We're talking about housing markets, okay? Higher yields, mortgage rates. You better believe that they're going to be staying up for some time right now when we have the 10-year back approaching 4.5% and you've got the 30-year, man, ballooning, all right? You talk about the yield curve. Let's look at it up and down right now. You talk about some steepening, okay? How about the 30-year up 20 
basis points. That is a mammoth move on a 30-year when you talk about where you are. We got the 10-year, as I mentioned, about 4.46. The 30-year, 4.65 right now, but a mammoth move. The further you go on the curve, the higher the move has been, okay? That's that's going to matter at some point. It's not mattering today, though. That's my opinion. Not mattering today. And how about that dollar? Right, DXY 105.23. <clears throat> Excuse me. We jump around to the euro US dollar. We get some of the pairs. You talk about a move, man. I think I heard them talking about on Bloomberg today that this was the biggest move since 2016. It's a Brexit, maybe? Now, that's a weekly. It's all happening today. But it is interesting. We're still chopping around between about 106 and 112, and it's a great day. We're going to talk to our man Teddy Cakestad at 40 past the hour. We're going to talk some Forex. What a great day to talk some Forex, man, and yields as you talk about it. And Chairman Powell, he'll come on tomorrow. Now, all expectations are we're going to get a 25 basis point cut tomorrow, but it is going to be interesting to see where the market begins to price those cuts because right now this market is saying higher for longer. Higher for longer, Chairman Powell, okay? We have tax cuts coming down the line. You have the corporate tax cut potentially going down to 15%, okay? That's going to expand growth, which is going to allow those companies to potentially handle higher yields. You know what else is, it's going to do? It's going to decrease tax revenues that the country takes in, expanding the debt, pointing to the fact that, yeah, we're probably going to be higher for longer as that debt goes up. I mean, the numbers there, all right, nonpartisan, folks. You're talking about the journal. Let's see if we can pull it up. Where are we? Yeah, I'll pull it up. Is that the one? No, I'll get it up here. I mean, you're talking about $7.5 trillion is the number there over 10 years. And the market is reacting. But equities, they don't care today, man. What's interesting is you jump around to, I mean, even the likes of Amazon, right? Barely in the positive by a dollar this morning. You jump over to a chart like Google right now. They're higher. Okay? You know why? Antitrust issues. Okay? That's my opinion. All right? But Google's got a problem. Remember the deal? Potentially going to get broken up, right? Well, all of that's in flux right now as you got a regime change coming at you. You talk about a company like Apple. Barely in the positive. Folks, you get the NASDAQ 100 up by 1.6% today. But guess what? The Russell is up almost 7%, right? The Dow is up 2.8% right now. The NASDAQ, the weakest of them all, up by only 1.5%. Okay, so is this a little bit of a rotation that's going to keep taking place? We will find out. Yeah, some of the winners and losers, for obvious reasons, Coinbase. You got Bitcoin rocking higher. You got Coinbase going to open up by about $25. You're talking about more than a 10% pop out there. Now, if you're out there trading DJT, Please be careful, okay? If you bought DJT a week ago, you're in a losing position, folks. Did you hear that? If you bought DJT a week ago, you're in a losing position, okay? Don't get it caught up in the hysteria. As I put out in the newsletter this morning, no matter what you're trading today, get your stops in place, okay? There's going to be rip-roaring rallies and declines across the board. We're in a period of high volatility right now. Do not let many of these run against you. Now, yeah, you're up to $10 from where you were yesterday, Okay, but look at the volatility we've seen. Look at how many people, even at $43, are going to be in a losing position. Point being, don't let that happen to you. You got winners out there today, make sure you protect them, okay? And boy, we're going to have a lot to talk about as we jump around, folks. S&Ps making all-time highs this morning. Dow making all-time highs this morning. Russell inching towards that level. We'll be right back, folks. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A 
former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member. Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This portion of the Morning Market Kickoff is brought to you by Direction's Daily Leveraged and Inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps up by 2.1% today. It's going to be a wild one, man. As I mentioned, keep those stops in place no matter what you're trading today, folks. I advise you to have uh, – there's no reason to let things run against you on a day like today. This is my experience, okay? When you get it right, boy, the moves can be magnificent, okay? But you get it wrong and you let it run against you. You better believe things can move faster and further than you think, okay? We've all seen it play out mammoth moves across the board right now and yeah we're still 10 minutes away from the opening bell and where are we going to go with yields right that's one of the driving forces right now with the 10 year off more than a full point right now and you jump over to the 30 year down by almost three full points we're going to see where it comes out man all right you jump around to some of the articles when we're talking about where we are right now you jump over to the journal okay now what they're talking about is many things in here, all right? And this is where it's so interesting. I was even talking to my mom and my sister last night saying, you know, it's so interesting when sometimes you don't exactly even know if they told you what was going to happen, where markets would go, right? Which is so interesting about being a market participant sometimes is that you could have the answers ahead of time. And it's still very difficult on massive moves to understand where we go from there. Now, where do we go when it comes to taxes, right? Taxes are going down, period, okay? Where are they going down, though? Where are they going down? Are they going down on the corporate level or are they going down on the personal level? If they're going down on the corporate level, <clears throat> what's that going to do? That's going to boost profits, okay? But if they're going down on the corporate level, where's the tax revenue come from that's supposed to pay for the debt 
these are the things that are going to digest over the next few months to play in there, okay? And, yeah, we'll see how things play out. But, boy, when you look at this number in yields, folks, okay, there is big money in play. My dad would always say, right, the bond market so much bigger than equities, okay? And we have moves that we have not seen in many, many years, to put it lightly. This market is saying under the policies that are coming at you right now, yields are going up period okay and you can elaborate on what you think that has to do with our debt all right but we'll see where they go from there because even you get over to the journal all right you're talking about whether it's tariffs okay you're gonna see big things happening okay now where do they fall is it gonna be 60 percent i don't know if it's gonna be 60 percent all right we're gonna find out though that's the number that's been touted there okay yeah and then comes taxes, okay? When you look at it, folks, all right? Lower tax rates for individuals and businesses expire at the end of 2025. That's going to cost $5 trillion over 10 years, okay? So everybody loves no taxes, but nobody loves the debt. We'll see if it comes back into focus as all of this start coming through, man. Um, yeah. Man, Jeff... You know, anyway, no, it wouldn't have been tough. You, you, you wake up and you fight the next day. Don't don't encapsulate what you think you know, Jeff, sometimes, you know. My dad's a beast. You saying things would have been tough? No, nothing's tough. You wake up and you fight the next day, folks. Life goes on, okay? This was a resounding victory. He's going to win the, the general population vote, all right? Democrats better wake up because I'm very much in the middle, folks. I know I come out. But, yeah, they got a big problem, man. And hopefully they wake up and don't look at it the other way. I got a million friends that are Republicans. I got a million family members that are Republicans, okay? They're beautiful people. We got massive differences in the economy. But, boy, there's a lot of stuff about Democrats that drive me crazy, and I hope they do some soul-searching, man, you know, across the board. So, yeah. Um, you know, you wake up the next day, man, life goes on, okay? And, you know, just be vigilant across the board because I hope that – Good comes out of this, period. There's a, there is a lot of good, and that's why Trump won the election, okay? But there's also a potentially a lot of bad, and that's why 50% of the country doesn't agree with him, right? And so you just stay vigilant. You move forward. We still have a House. We still have a Senate. We'll see where we go. But you wake up the next day and you move forward for your family, period, you know? It wouldn't have been a tough one, man. Anybody who's out there, you know, crying, reeling from, get over it, man, and live on. That's the bottom line, okay? You keep fighting for what you believe in. You keep marching on. Life goes on, okay? Um, yeah, so it's a tough one across the board. But that's, that's, that's where you go, man. But these numbers with the debt, folks, okay? You're talking about $10 trillion over the next decade. Keep your eye on those yields. That is going to matter across the board when you look at that price level, okay? And yields are the mover today with the 30-year down by three full points. <whistles> it's a big one, folks. Yeah. Now, the dollar, it's always interesting in terms of where you go for the dollar because you got dollar strength, man. Well, if we got higher yields coming at you across the board, man, you got dollar through the roof at 105.25. We've reversed everything. Can't wait to see what Chairman Powell has to say tomorrow. Um, he's going to have his hands full, folks. And we want an independent Fed, okay? The last thing, you know, I, I encourage you to think longer term, okay? When I used to play poker a lot, right, the way you analyze a decision is you say to yourself, okay, if I make this decision a thousand times, am I going to end up profitable in the long run? Okay, that's that's a great way to analyze things. So in poker and in life and in the markets, you want to run a scenario as many times as you can in your head and say to yourself, on the long run, am I making a decision that has a positive expectation going forward? And longer run, man, we are seeing some trends here come into play with yields across the board. And you want to make those decisions thinking in the longer term when you go there. OK, um, yeah. And yeah, totally, man. You know, listen, the bottom line is. And that's that's what drove me crazy about Trump and what does drive me crazy about Trump, man, is the way that 
the elections play out and the way he handled the losses. But America spoke. That's democracy, man. He won. Period. End of sentence. Okay? That's if you believe in democracy, democracy spoke last night. So believe in it full hearted and just keep standing up for it, man. That's the deal. Yeah. Um you, you can't love it and hate it in the same essence, folks. Okay? That's democracy and it's resounding. So Democrats better wake up to what's going on, man, across the board. All right. Now, markets. Let's check and take a look at Tesla. If you're in Tesla, all right, yeah, we closed our, our short in Tesla yesterday, thankfully. We weren't holding this one. And, uh, yeah, because, yeah, there's no reason, folks, unless you really want to gamble it up. And maybe you did. You know what? If you were, if you were, this would have been a great way to play it. All right, this is where you look at different things. If you were buying DJT a week ago, you're in a losing position. Not if you were buying Tesla, man. Yeah, if you were buying Tesla, you're up by 10%. Okay. Now, how does that play out? Yeah. How does that play out? You know, Darth Xander, you're treading lightly, brother. Okay. I know everyone's excited, but let's all have some respect on a day today as well, because that's the period. Okay. It's all about respect. Okay. That's where it comes from, man. So respect everybody, folks. Love everybody. All right. And enjoy the conversation, because that's how democracy wins in the, in the long run. S&Ps. We're higher. We're coming back for an open like none other, folks. Stay tuned. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels. You'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns. You'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry October 11th and 25th for more live trading trading action. Your purchase goes towards two sessions, so make sure to sign up now so you don't miss a chance to sit next to Larry as he trades the market live. For all information and to reserve your spot today, go to the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV.
Welcome back, folks. We're here for the opening bell, and we got the S&Ps up by 120 points right now. Come on. Oh, we're slow. Of course we are. On a day like today, we're a little slow. The chart's keeping up. S&P's up 120 right now. NASDAQ 100 up 340. The NASDAQ, uh, excuse me, the Dow up almost 3% right now. And the Russell up by 5.4%. We were all the way up to 24.23. And the last part of the YouTube Tigers Den, man, everyone's excited. I get it, man. It's a big day. All right. It is a big day. And just the one comment that caught me, right, is that you know, my dad was not a fan of Trump, obviously, but he would, it wouldn't have been a tough one for him. Okay, that's that's why my dad, who he was, you know, you don't live in this in this dwelling. All right, you get up, he would have been busting his butt the next day. You look forward, you provide for your family, man. Period. It's not there's no freaking deal like that. All right, all these people that need, you know, counseling and stuff like that. I get it, folks. Everyone's got their feelings. All right, but wake up. Now, would have been good for the country in his wallet, though. Now, that's a fair one, Darth Zander, okay? But here's the thing, and this is what I want to stress. Not that simple. Everyone thinks it's that simple, all right? Where do you think my dad was importing some of the stuff that he's building houses with, okay? China, okay? These tariffs are going to matter, folks, all right? This was not a deal where my dad was hoping for Trump to lose, but he, in the back of his head, he said, you know, I'm a businessman, I'm a business owner, period, all this stuff, <clears throat> and at least I'll make more money. No, no. This is going to have economic impacts on that front, and we'll see where the policies actually lie, okay? And that's the one thing that, you know, the rhetoric, the rhetoric is um, not always meets reality, right? But be prepared for some of that, because there is a jubilant phase in the market today, and... You know, if inflation is there, with you're talking about electronics, okay? You're talking about clothing. You're talking about many things, all right? And then you got just straight out goods that come from China across the board, chips, whatever it is, right? That's going to matter, folks. It was something that was on my dad's mind. We talked about it constantly. Talked about it constantly. So it's not as simple as, you know, you're a business owner, you're paying less taxes. There are going to be some hardships here for that tariff war and the trade war. And then you have immigration, okay? Now, I think Democrats missed the ball on that one a big time. That is something that they better get their hands on because it means a lot to a lot of voters, justifiably. All right. But again, who's going to do those jobs? And I, I know we all know this. All right. But that is going to be one of the things that really comes to fruition if some of those policies get done. Just keep them in your mind when you're talking about the market, man, because there are a lot of jobs that immigrants are doing. All right. And. You can span many different industries of that degree, and whether you disagree or agree what's coming down the line, it is coming down the line, folks, and it is going to have a meaningful impact on many lives when you talk about prices. So, yeah, we're going to be paying less money at the pump, though. That is for sure right now. It's already pretty good, and it seems like it's might get a little better, but look at the move. You know, we're just back to where we were on Monday in crude, folks. All right, not a huge move. Of all the moves going on right now, the move in the dollar, the move across the board, you got crude right now, only moving a dollar. Crude's been moving a dollar every single day. We're trading at $70.79 pennies right there. But the markets, yeah, we're still shifting positive. You get the S&Ps up by 2.2 at record highs across the board, and we keep our eye on yields. Yeah, pretty remarkable. You're talking about 4.46%, the yield on that 10-year. All right. Yeah, I mean, we could talk endlessly on this, right? Regulations, I mean, the journal had a good rundown on this, talking about everything from regulations to tariffs to crude um, to the tax cuts that, that are being in there in terms of where they go. But we'll talk about that a little bit more when we get back. All right, what else have we got? Yeah, look at where we are in rates coming in. Now, it's so interesting as this article was written this morning at 7 a.m., but it's not calculating what just happened in the moving rates, man. If you're thinking of getting a mortgage, I don't know. Might be time to just lock it in and bite the bullet because I don't see these yields dropping to any dramatic degree with what's going on here. You're talking about tax cuts. You're talking about deregulation. And you're talking about potentially inflationary factors. Combine them all. That's higher yields, man. And already we know what's been happening. But how about a contract rate? 6.81% in the week ended November 1st, the highest since July. Yeah, in the last five weeks, the rate has risen almost three quarters of a point, the most in two years. Man, it is quite a move out there. Refinancing dropped for a six week. No one's going to be refinancing this week or next week, man. Ain't happening, right? You check that out. So, you know, it's, uh, and then you get into, 
if you can't refinance, you can't tap the equity in your house, it's going to be harder to buy a house, that could weigh at the same time that you have some inflationary factors coming down the line. It's going to be an interesting one. You jump over to the CME FedWatch tool. Nothing's changing for tomorrow, folks. We're getting a quarter point, okay? 99.1. The only one here now is that they're saying there's a 1% risk. We have 50 basis points. That's not happening either. There's no way the Fed is going to cut 50 basis points when you got yields spiking higher and the market thinks there's a 91 to 1. So you're getting a quarter point tomorrow, all right? Anything can happen till it happens. And then the market is thinking, and this is the first time, these have changed from where we were just a day ago, okay? There's now a one out of three chance that they stay where they are and they do not cut in the December meeting. Market was only putting that as a one in five chance. All right, a month ago, the market said there's no freaking way that we're not actually at least have two cuts by the December meeting, right? Not the case anymore, man. You're seeing this play out. The market is going to adjust to where we are and Chairman Powell is going to have to talk about it, man. Yeah, you go three meetings out, and there's only there's about a 20% chance that we only get one cut. Now, keep in mind, there's a 20% chance in the market right now that we get one cut over the next three meetings, but that cut's already factored into the November. Is the Fed really going to give it a two-month break at 4.5? It's possible. Okay, we start getting some radical tariffs. And listen, you might believe them. I always said the lead up to this, okay? The lead up to this, it is a great conversation. I love the tariff conversation. Maybe it's the right thing in the longer term. I just talked to you about what do you do when you're, you're running simulations for trying to figure out expected value? You want to reach the, the sample size that gets you to the long-term average, okay? It is remarkable to think on the long term that this market is saying, man, we might be stuck right now at 4.5. But guess what? If you're going to get tax cuts, you're going to get deregulation, you're going to get cheaper crude prices potentially, yeah, the market might be able to handle it. That's what it's saying today. But again, get your spikes up for the next few days, man, because we're going to have some rip roaring rallies and what's, um, or we're going to rip rally movements one way or the other. But what, and this is going to play out all the way up until like, you know, we're, until policy starts to be enacted, right? Nobody really knows what the policy is going to be. It's one thing, and both candidates do it, man, not just Trump, but he's, he's, he pushes the limits in terms of rhetoric on the campaign trail versus policies that are coming down the line. And only he really knows right now where those policies are going to be. Tariffs, you don't need to pass anything for tariffs. So that's going to be the first one, all right? Now, Republicans may sweep it and they may get all three, it's still a little complicated to get something passed as a law, but you don't need that for tariffs. So, so tariffs could be one of the first steps coming at you and get ready for a reverberation there. But we got the NASDAQ pushing highs yet again, man. Look at this thing. Let's see how the Magnificent Seven are trading. Apple shares only up by about six tenths percent right now. You got Microsoft up by eight tenths percent. Amazon shares up by eight tenths percent. Tesla, Elon. Yeah, talk about money well spent. Everyone was giving him crap for buying Twitter for $44 billion. Folks, that's a drop in the bucket to have the power that he has right now. And you got to remember that he did that by selling Tesla off when it was above $400. Stay tuned, folks. We're coming back with our man, Teddy Kegstab. This is going to be a good one. Don't go away. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at DFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk. So why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. 
Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We're getting our man Teddy on the line right now. But boy, you check out where we are, man. How about NVIDIA? Up another 3% right now. Was that an all-time high, 144? I think it's an all-time high. All-time high for NVIDIA across the board, man. 144.21, up by more than 3%. And that's a mammoth move when you're talking about the size of the company that NVIDIA, NVIDIA is, as this NASDAQ keeps plowing higher. We're now up by what? 440 points, 2.2%. 2 .2%. You see the pop, another 100 points on the open, man. We were pushing 20,000 yesterday. We're going to be pushing 21,000 before we know it this morning. Remarkable. Yeah, and it is remarkable when you jump to where we are next in terms of how about uh, how about the banks, right? You talk about it. Bank of America up by 8.2% this morning. You jump over to J.P. Morgan right now, up by 9.2%. Look at these banks. City, whoops. City up by 9.7% right now. Wells Fargo. 14.5%, man. You talk about it, man. The banks, they seem to be doing well uh, on potential regulation change across the board. Yeah, and back to Tesla. Now, you're going to hold Tesla forever? Go for it. And yes, you know, he is quite a man. He's going to have the president's year. He's somehow going to be the CEO of all these companies. He's just going to be a, a consultant or something so he can stay as CEO, yet somehow participate in government. But Trump has talked about doing away with the EV credits, okay? On the short term, I'll we'll delete that one. That's old news. Uh, that was yesterday, 247. We're at 286. This, this is a story stock now. When you talk about that it jumps 14% when the candidate gets elected, that is against EV credits, and you have the biggest American EV car producer out there. Yes, the future may be bright, okay? And how's that going to play out? We're going to find out. But just get those spikes up on your back on Tesla. Yeah. We jump around to some other equities, checking it out. Netflix shares. Yeah, always interesting. You got winners and losers on a day like today, right? Even the Magnificent 7 stocks, not up dramatically when you look at the NASDAQ 100 right now, up by about 2%. And meanwhile, you get the biggest equities out there. Not to the same degree. All right. You check out where we are here, right? This is the S&P 500. What's losing? Home Depot down by 2.7%. Lowe's down by 3.6%. Higher mortgage rates coming at you, folks. All right. Now, what do we got? We got Coca-Cola is down 2.6% right now. You really got to dig in there. 
yeah, look at these home builders, man. This is where, you know, everybody is so quick in the tiger stand to say, ah, it would be good for your bottom line. No, we got higher interest rates, folks. You have inflationary forces. You have tariffs from China. There are companies and people that are going to get hurt, man. You got Nike down by 2.7%. As I said, DR Horton, right? The home builders, man. DHI. Yeah, you gap lower down by 8%. Okay. Um, so be careful thinking it's all rejoicing. Rejoicing. There are pockets here that are going to face some stress depending on what actually gets done in terms of where we go for whether you're talking about rhetoric meeting reality, right? And that's what I would encourage you. Is we really don't know where we're going to go just yet. Um, the house still to be determined out there. It looks like it might be a red wave. And if that's the case, we still don't know what that exactly means here, okay? If you have radically higher yields, it's all going to it's all going to combine to see where we go, but just pay attention on some of these factors, man. You think your house is going to go through the roof? No, we might have dramatically higher yields, okay? We might have dramatically higher inflation. Maybe that's what you believe in. Maybe that's the best thing you think for the future, and maybe it is. Maybe we need a little short-term pain for a long-term benefit, okay? I would love it if that's the conversation, but that's not the conversation. It's all kind of rosy, right? Ah, we're going to do tariffs. Everything's going to be great. It's not how it might play out, folks, okay? So keep those spikes up on your back because you're seeing. I mean, we could deal with an era of an 8% mortgage, and you better believe that might hit the home equity line. It's going to build hit the home builders. It is right now, and you're going to have, you know, my dad would say, it's, it's, it's what can you sign for, right? That's what it is. What can you sign for? Well, if mortgage rates are going to go back to 7 or 8%, man, what you can sign for is going to take a dramatic hit dramatic hit and don't think those can't happen again don't think that somehow we're immune from a dramatic pullback when you have companies like dr horton okay going from 60 to 200 over the period of two years in the home builders right and folks they build plenty of houses out here in central florida i'm in lakeland all right plenty of houses look at the run these companies have had being the home builders at a time when we've had pretty affordable rates now the last couple of years yeah, they've gone gangbusters. You know why? Because they're only the only game in town. They can buy down rates to a certain degree. They can do certain things. Um, but yeah, there's nothing to say that we don't have a substantial pullback in certain pockets. Now the banks, no, they're not. They're not going to have that pullback right now. All right, J.P. Morgan's up almost nine percent today. You got banks going through the roof. We have yields going higher across the board, and we have deregulation freeing up companies to do business with these banks, etc. So there's going to be pockets everywhere. Keep our eye on the dollar, man. Yeah, about two full points to the upside. 105.30, and then yield's going to be in focus, especially that longer term, man. I think it was, I think they were talking about, was it limit? Somebody in the den, right? Was that what it was? Was it limit? I think they were almost limit. Is that real? I mean, we haven't seen something like that, man, that the 30 year was down almost three full points, something like that. It is remarkable when you look at where um, that has moved. Folks, you think about a quarter point over a 30-year loan, think about the impact of a monetary decision when you can move 25 basis points for a 30-year overnight like that. And, you know, this is this could just be just the beginning. Yeah, but you talk about candles, man. Haven't seen a candle like that in a while. And we are on our way back to where we were in April. From 113 to 127, back to 113. As our, Basil Chat, as our man Basil Chapman would say, some symmetry there, right? Nice little cup formation, nice little symmetry. And uh, boy, we got there quicker than we did on the way up as we are pulling back. And we might get there before we know it, man. Just like that. And yeah, you check back in on gold. So it's been a stratospheric run for gold. And you're taking it on the chin today. Down by $86, down by more than 3%. I mean, all things considered, folks, we're back to where we were on October 15th, okay? It's been quite a run. This run began in February at 2000, all right? Yeah, began in February at 2000. You're still up almost 30% from where we were in February at about 2000, but you're going to see these things take a little while to play out. S&P's giving it up a little bit, all right? We're up by 1.7%. But you've now traded down 45 points. And this is what I was talking about, okay? Keep your stops in play, folks, no matter what you're trading today, all right? We know if you've been watching this show, if you're in the den, if you're in the YouTube Tigers den, you know that the first move is not always the one that's going to be there, okay? 
And as in it's not always the one that plays out, doesn't mean that you don't get a rip-roaring decline and then a rally right back at you. But do not hold on to those losses because you just got to get the right side. Keep them tight today because you see the type of moves. Right off the open, boom, S&P's down 40 points. Okay? Now you're still up 94. Well, we've given back a third of the gains we had overnight. We're up by 94 points. But that is quite a move if you're holding on. Okay, we've broken through the lows we had at 640 in the morning. Where's the next stop? Probably 5,900. We'll see. One more segment, folks. We're coming back. Don't go away. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters Letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. S&P's up by 1.6% today. Yeah, maybe a little profit taken. Man, can't fault you. If you had some leverage bets, you had any kind of bets in there, right? Nothing wrong with taking a little off the table as you push. We're at all-time highs, folks. We're at all-time highs. Meanwhile, you got yields spiking through the roof, okay? That is going to be a weight on equities at some point. Market seems to think right now that it's not a big enough weight in contrast to what you get when it comes to deregulation, when it comes to tax cuts on the corporate level, okay? But those higher yields will be an impediment at some degree. So keep your eye on it, man. Nonetheless, S&P is up by 1.6% today. And yeah, the Russell, they give it back as well. 
I mean, check out this Russell, man. 37 points off there. 31, almost 40. We're 60. We're 63 points off of where we were trading, folks. You just traded off 2.5% from the highs that we were at. Okay, you're going to see volatility everywhere. Keep those stops tight today if you're trading. That's what I encourage you. There's no reason why you have to let anything run against you when if you just catch the run, you can get multiples more than what you're risking in this type of a fast market. We jump over to the VIX, volatility index. Anytime there's uncertainty sucked out of this market, pretty remarkable. Excuse me, we're still sitting at a 17 VIX. When we got markets up dramatically at all-time highs almost across the board, right? Yeah, NASDAQ 100, not quite there just yet. We back it up. Oh, no, we are there, aren't we? Yeah, is it the Dow? Which one? Is it just the Russell? Is that the only one that we haven't gotten there yet? I think it is. Yeah, remarkable. Vic's sitting at almost 17, though. And as I said, keep your eye on those yields, man. You get the 30-year down two points and 20 ticks. And you get the 10-year right now down a full point and three ticks. And we'll finish it up with King Dollar. Up almost two full points at 105.13. Now, you know, we're in the realm of where we've been, though. All right. Now, Teddy had a few technical difficulties. We're going to try and get him back on the air later this week, folks. Um, and we'll talk some currencies because it's a good one. Folks, thanks so much for kicking off your trading morning right here with me at TFNN. It's a wild one. And stay tuned. We got our man Basil Chapman. He's coming up next. We got our man Steve Rhodes coming up after that. Fast Market after that. Larry Pesamento after that. And our man Jacob Shoup after that. Stay tuned, folks. Have a great Wednesday. We'll see you tomorrow, everybody. Thanks so much.